Yeah, what's up, Giants fans, Hub Watchers, YouTube and Rumble subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's Kush back at it again with another New York Giants update video. Training camp has been underway for a week now. The first week, in fact, is in the books and beginning today, as I'm recording this and speaking right now, actually, padded practice has begun at the Giants training camp, meaning that they're going to be taking a step up in basically every drill that they do going forward i do want to say of course i have been able to cover training camp on the daily like i have been in the past uh but it's been relatively easy to get news and coverage of it from every single beat reporter it seems and also twitter if you don't have a twitter it's probably going to be your best friend around this time of the off season with that being said i me not being able to cover it i do want to give you guys four players that have stood out through the first week of training camp and really put a mark and let people know that they're here and they mean business. We'll see if it translates into the regular season, of course. Before I get into it, real quick, as you guys can see, I am wearing a Young Joker t-shirt. This is my own uh, merch that I designed. This was from last summer. And I do have two new designs up right now. One for Xavier McKinney, kind of a comic book design. And one for Aziz Ojolari. Uh, kind of more of a vintage poster style if you like these please definitely support the channel go check them out on teespring and get you your own shirt uh and one of those players is definitely on this list let's start off though with the person whose name i've probably seen the most um in the first couple of days first four days at least in training camp and that is third year cornerback darnay holmes a lot of people on this list uh, because I don't want to say it just for Darnay, but a lot of people on this list, if you've followed my channel for a while, you know that I really like a lot. When we drafted Darnay, I was uh, a little bit more high on him than other people, uh, going as far to say that he's going to be the best corner out of the 2020 class. I don't think that anymore, but I still think he could be a really good corner for us. And he's really been showing that in training camp. In the first four days of ca training camp, Darnay has had four straight days of turnovers him causing turnovers either by forcing a fumble or by getting an interception he's looked really really good especially now when you think about a wink martindale defense that if he's going to continue to blitz as much as he did in baltimore it's gonna mean that some corners are gonna be end up uh end up left on an island by themselves with no help and they're gonna have to basically prove that they can handle that so far darnay has done that like I said, four straight days. I think it was like the first three days, an interception every single day at camp. And the fourth day was a forced fumble or something along those lines. He's been nothing short of absolutely balling out. And I don't know what may be the reason for this. Maybe he's just taking that next step. As we all know, I kind of got a three-year rules with players. By your third year, I feel like in 90, 85% of situations, you know what kind of player you're getting from when you drafted them. There's really, really rare cases where it's like on their second contract, they go out there and ball out like um, uh, Shaq Barrett did with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But by your third year, it's kind of like you've gone through that rookie season where it could really go anywhere. Sophomore season can be an up or and down because we've seen players take off. We've seen players have a sophomore slump. And that third season is usually where it evens out. Maybe that is the case for Darnay, who's kind of had an up and down career so far with the new york giants either way he's kind of the the slated guy to be at starting slot corner unless you guys really think quarter to flat hashtag fear to flop we'll see if that takes place in a few years unless you think he's really going to come out here and ball out but darnay is holding down that spot for himself right now next up is somebody y'all know i love i mean i just showed you some merch of him that like i poured my heart and soul into making because this is something I still stand by. Similar title that I gave to Darnay Holmes. I really do truly believe in 2020, the Giants got the best overall safety in the 2020 NFL draft in the second round. An absolute steal in Xavier McKinney. And we saw him break out last year. Now, it seems that it's only in Giants land we consider last year his breakout year. But he was, uh, I think, tied for fourth in the league in um, interceptions with five of them. And we saw this man just take another step. You know, plays like that pick six against the Vegas Raiders come to mind. But you watched him play. You just knew somehow, some way, he was going to end up where the ball is going. He's a great dude to drop back and be a free safety. He's great with blitzing, tackling, everything. I feel like he's just a perfect package of an overall safety. And so does Don Wink Martindale, all right? 
because in the Wink defense, Eric Weddle, former Raven safety, he was the guy with the green dot on his helmet. He was the guy that was calling plays for the Martindale defense. Now, we got Blake Martinez, a good linebacker in his own right. Blake Martinez, in my opinion, kind of underrated. Um, and he was the one that called played for us when he was healthy last year. And then, of course, the year before when we first signed him. But moving forward, it looks like Martindale is going to give it back to, you know, basically the position that he was comfortable with in Baltimore. And that is the safety position. And it looks like McKinney is going to be slated in as a defensive leader kind of officially this season. Now, I think uh, when I say officially, I just mean that, you know, the coach's approval or whatever, like he's actually going to be telling the players what to do. How'd you like being defensive coordinator for a player too? It was cool. Uh, Could have called a better defense, but I called what I called and, uh, you know, things happen. But it was fun though. Did you know that was going to happen? Uh, yeah, we did it before in OTAs. Um, we've done it a couple times, uh, kind of just where it's like a competition thing uh, between me and DJ. Um, I'm really glad to see that he's getting this recognition from our coaches, and I want to see what he does moving forward. So Wink has actually connected him, this is by Art Stapleton, with Eric Weddle, the safety I mentioned earlier that was calling the plays for Wink in Baltimore. They did some work in the offseason, and McKinney is sort of being mentored a little bit, a little bit by Eric Weddle. We'll see how that is moving forward. And of course, during training camp, he's looked extremely strong. And I, like I said, for us last year with his breakout season, but maybe nationally by fans of other teams and general fans of the NFL, they'll recognize him for what he is, in my opinion. That is one of the best safeties in the league. Next up, I actually have kind of a tie to round off the four players that I think have really been showing out in training camp. And they're both at the same position i'll start off with somebody that i was not too particularly excited when the giants took him i was really scratching my head for sure i've since come around on the pick you guys seen me say it on streams if you follow me on twitter you've seen me say don't sleep on this man wandale robinson the guy that was one of the best college football receivers production wise in the sec i believe if he didn't lead the sec in total number of yards he was second from his receiver position coming out of Kentucky. And like I said, my draft reaction is up. I'm not going to try and hide it. I don't do that. I was definitely scratching my head when we took him. A lot of it had to do with the fact that how similar he is to the receiver we took just last year in the first round, Kadarius Toney. They're built very similarly, similar height, similar build, very similar skill set. And Wanda Robinson has done nothing but show that he belongs in the NFL thus far. Now, of course, once again, yes, yes, it is training camp. Let me not get too excited, Giants fans. Let not yourselves get too carried away as well. But from all accounts, and shout out to Bobby Skinner and shout out to Justin Pennick of Talking Giants because they've been the guys I've really been getting these clips from. Um, They've been the guys on Twitter that's been giving me most of the updates and most of, like, giving all of us fans most of the updates. The beat reporters, they're doing their thing, but... When it comes to Wandale specifically, his name has popped up quite a bit, especially when it comes to the offense. It seems like either they have, the, and when I say they, I mean the Giants coaching staff, they've made it a point to involve Wandale Robinson and to get him going early on as a rookie so that he has as little growing pains as possible during a regular season, or he's just the guy capitalizing the most out of anybody else in our wide receiver core. Because he showed up in contested catches. He showed up in tight windows. I feel like that was probably the most viral clip with him. He showed up a lot in motions as well. And I guess I will give a shout out to Mike Kafka um, here. Our offensive coordinator. Former quarterbacks coach, coach of the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, everybody, especially Justin on Twitter, has been saying this Giants offense just looks so completely different right now. With just the way that they're operating. There's actually pre-snap motion. Us as Giants fans, can you believe that we're cheering for pre-snap motion? Something that's become normal in the NFL, but because we've been in a Jason Garrett 1940s offense for the past two years, you know, we get extremely happy when we see it. But not just any pre-snap motion. People have been saying that it looks extremely similar to what Kansas City does. And the way that we're using our receivers is looking a lot like the way Kansas City did. Now, I'm happy to hear that. Obviously, that's one of the best offenses in the NFL. I'm just a little surprised that we're not seeing a little bit more Bills influence from Brian Dayball. But that must be a good sign, in my opinion, at least, because that means Dayball trusts Kafka enough to say, you got this. This is this is your offense, man. I'm, I'm probably going to pop in here a little bit with tidbits of information, you know, help you out when I think I need to. But for the most part, he's letting Kafka have a go at it, because at least for me, 
that was one of my main concerns. This is Kafka's first year as an OC. I thought Dable would have been a little bit more hands-on, but he's staying true to this word. I don't know if you guys remember earlier in the offseason, there was a question asked similar to who's going to have the reins of the offense, and Dayball said it would be Mike Kafka, even though he was the guy handling Josh Allen and that also really good Buffalo Bills offense. Kafka is going to be the one handling ours, and I can't wait to see the way it produces on the field, leading me into the next player, like I said, at the same position, tie for the guys that have the like, best training camp so far, Kadarius Tony. And y'all know I'm a big Kadarius Tony fan as well, like I said at the beginning of this video. I am really happy to be making this video right now, not just as a Giants fan, but because a lot of these players I am a big fan of. And I am wearing Kadarius Tony's shirt right now that I made, not a coincidence. Spoiler alert, I will be having another one out in the next couple days or so for new merch as well. Young Joker is Joker season. Go support that man on Spotify, bro. All right, even if you don't listen to that genre of music, just have it on replay in the background to support our New York Giant because he has also had a great um camp. He has looked kind of unstoppable at times last year during the regular season. Specifically, Dallas comes to mind. The Saints come to mind as well. And during training camp, I wouldn't say unstoppable, but there's times that he's on the field and he's making other defenders look foolish. And there's times on the field where he surprises even me because we know Kadarius Tony to be one of the shiftiest guys in the NFL. He has the potential to be one of the fastest guys in the NFL. He has pretty good hands. If he could stay healthy, his skill set at his size can really take him very far because not a lot of defenders just have the pure athleticism and, and like the flexibility to keep up with him. And he added something to his game that made him even more dangerous, in my opinion, that we saw several times during training camp. And that is the contested catch. That is using his vertical to go up over bigger defenders and actually come down with the ball uh, securely. The reason this makes him so much more, uh, so much harder to defend is because we have a contested gotch guy on the uh, offense already. That's Kenny Galladay. And we'll see. That's a whole other video right now, the way people feel about Kenny Galladay. We'll see how he pans out going into the season. But we could use Kadarius Tony literally anywhere on the field. We know already that he could be used on a run as a running back from his college days. We know we could use him in trick plays as a quarterback from his college days. And I did we do it once last year? I can't even remember. We know that he's just going to be one of the best receivers out there when it comes to motions and short catches and turning short gains into extremely long yardage. And we know because of his speed, he was a deep threat as well. Now we know we can just throw it up to him and he can get it. And the reason I have him at number one is because of Pat the Rat and other media members as well. Just trying to make this guy seem like a villain and they've succeeded. There's a lot of Giants fans that hate Kadarius Tony with no good reason. And I'm so happy that he's having this camp and it seems like a lot of fans that are attending camp absolutely love the guy. He's been getting a lot of cheers because I want to see him succeed so bad. This is the play. Like we got people out here going to battle for Daniel Jones and I get it. I get it. Why can't we go to battle for all of our players, man? They're all on the New York Giants and Tony has done nothing wrong but show up to work and do his job. And it, for those of you that say, oh, well, you know, he was missing training camp last year. None of that was his fault. We're talking about equipment, guys. We're talking about him grieving over a grandmother's loss. I don't want to get back into old views, but I'm really happy to see that he's been absolutely balling out this training camp and he's been enjoying himself and fans have been accepting him. But that's it for now. I'm already running a bit longer than I wanted for this video. Put your thoughts down below. Let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe. And before I'm out, I'll probably see some of y'all tomorrow because I will be at training camp tomorrow. Now, I'm out. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thank you for checking out my channel, The Hub, here on Giants YouTube. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you hear every time I put out a video. Like it, share, and subscribe, and I'm out.